Well, welcome back. Um, this video is going to be kind of a short video. Just uh, some, it's a new stuff, uh, new tooling, new potential new project uh, video. Just kind of going over some things. And I'm going to try to improve my oiler situation. I've been using uh, this one, which leaks. It's a Harbor Freight oiler. And it's got uh, just some th synthetic 10W30 in it. It's it's okay, but it's not what I'm supposed to be using, really. I'm supposed to be using some ISO 68 from what I've found. Um, and then I've got this oiler I need to clean up, but it's got some... I don't know what it is. It could have water in it. I don't want to use this stuff. i got to recycle that. So um, I thought I'd just do a short video of some improvements that I got, some, some new tooling, some, some things to actually start making future projects and uh, just go over what I got. Um, again, all this stuff's off of Amazon. It's the cheapest stuff I can find. I do not want to spend a lot of money on this, um, but these are things that I've found that are kind of ne necessary to have in order to proceed with future projects. You know, just some of the easy beginner projects that, that I want to make. Um, the first thing I, I wanted to get was some scribes. I know this is a beginner project too. You can make a scribe, um, but I thought for no more expensive than the cheapest ones were that out there, I think these were 10 bucks. I'll get a couple of them. Um, they come with a little magnet on the end, which, which is kind of helpful. Um, picking up chips and nuts and bolts and things that you might lose in the lathe. Um, just a simple little scribe. You can even replace the, the tips if you need to, but this is going to be handy. I got two of them. Um, that was uh, something I thought, you know, I'm going to need this in order to be able to mark the material so that I can machine it properly. So I got a couple of those. Uh, the other thing I wanted to get, because I, I just have a feeling I'm going to burn through the five inserts, indexable inserts that I have. And so I wanted to get some more. Um, these are uh, TCM T2151 tooling and they're what fits on the the tooling that I bought previously the they will work with with these three eighths pretty sure they're three eighths um, tooling bars that I have and I just wanted to make sure I had more that that I could replace them with so I could keep working on projects um, so far of the test cuts that I've had that I've made with with this particular tool, it's been fine. Um, I don't. I, th I think that's going to last quite a while for my use. But, but I just wanted to have some extras of these, so that I could keep going with. Because really, what I'm on my projects are going to be about learning. They're not going to be, you know, incredibly functional projects other than trying to make some of the tooling I have, some of the things I have around the house, the garage, a little bit better. Um, so I wanted to get some more of these. So I got couple of those. I got 10, 10 inserts in order to be able to, you know, replace as I'm working on projects. Um, the other thing I felt that I really needed, because I do have an upcoming project, I mentioned it in a past video um, where I was working on the hammer. The hammer face, which I'll show you, um, I, I made this uh, nylon hammer face. I want to make a nylon hammer face, so I got the original rubber and I have a nylon and I can change it out for um, a brass hammer face. And I did get some stock. I got some uh, material here that I want to machine down and make a brass hammer face. I got enough material where I can make a few um, because in the future, I want future episodes, I want to actually try to make my own homemade uh, adjustable hammer. I think it's called a Paulson hammer. Just don't quote me on that. I'm probably wrong there, but there is a proper name for these things. But, you know, this is just beginner stuff. But I got some material here finally that where I want to make a, a face for this. And I'm hoping to make it fairly thin so I can make several out of this. This, this stuff, this material is not cheap. I think this was this four inch bar, it's 35 bucks. So keep that in mind, excuse me, as you're working on these projects, you know, this, the, the raw stock is going to cost money. So there's, you know, there's a financial aspect to this. That's why I'm 
keeping all of these tools that I'm purchasing to a minimum. You know, I, I'm not buying the, the the name brand stuff. You know, I'm I'm just getting into it. You start buying the name brand stuff, you're going to spend big bucks. You're going to be well over the cost of the original lathe to begin with. So, um, we'll get to this in a minute. I mean, obviously, you know what it is, but um, the other thing I felt I, I really needed was a parting tool. Um, I'm going to be working, especially working with that bar of brass for the hammer face. If I start machining that, what I found with the nylon piece is I, I need to, I need to figure out, and and you experienced machinists out there already know this stuff, but I'm I'm a beginner, I'm learning, and these are for these videos are really for newbies, people that are just getting into this for a hobby, they don't know what they're doing, you know, and I'm learning as I go. There's an order, but what I've learned is there's an order that you should be machining the different parts of your of your end piece of your, you know, you. I, I can't really say exactly what the order is. It depends on what you're making. But, you know, if you're machining something that's got a shoulder on it or something that has a long, thin shank, but then a fat end, there's an order that you want to machine that in order to be able to chuck it up and properly spin it and turn it in order to properly uh, manipulate the material and you have enough grip and bite from your jaws. But if you, you know, if you leave yourself with a little shoulder like I did on that nylon hammer face, you can't grasp the material and you end up, you know, you can make it work, but you end up destroying your finished shoulder that you really wanted to be perfect. So that's something I'm learning as I'm going. So uh, I felt that I, I really needed to get a parting tool in order to, and this is a replaceable, you know, it's got my three eighths by half, but three eighths is, is the thickness of the rest of my tooling is. So I wanted to go with that. Um, but I wanted to get a parting tool so that when I do work on that brass material, I'm able to, you know, face it off. You know, I can chuck up, I can chuck up most of this material back here on the, on the back side of it, you know, but when I'm finished, I can part off, you know, just the hammer face portion that I'm working on and leave this other portion untouched. So I wanted to get a parting tool because I know as I work on other projects, this is going to be a valuable tool. Um, in addition to this particular one that I got, I wanted to make sure I had some, you know, again, you can spend a lot of money on this stuff. Um, I wanted to get some additional um, replaceable faces for it. So I've got 10 additional um, cutting inserts for that tool. So I have a parting tool, which will, you know, I don't want to get to where I got to take it out of the, out of the lathe and then use a hacksaw and cut it up and then clean it up. I could, but you know, I felt this would be something that would be, you know, I don't learn much about the lathe if I'm taking parts out and using a hacksaw. That's that stuff I used to do when I didn't have a lathe. Okay, finally, uh, I, I wanted to get a deburring tool. You know, I've got some materials that, uh, this is how it came packaged. It's, I didn't look for a particular brand. I just looked for something that had some additional uh, tooling that I could, you know, tool bits that I could put in the machine, in the, the hand tool. This particular, it was again on Amazon, Google it. One of the cheapest ones they have, Mayvast deburring tool, whatever. Uh, but it did come, let's get rid of this box. It did come with two packs of, you know, different tooling. Some of this is, it says it's rated for plastic, aluminum and, and steel. So I'm sure, I mean, they're obviously different shapes, but I think some of these are, are specific to aluminum. Some are going to be harder for steel and others are for plastic. But um, at any rate, I have this now so I can deburr the, the projects that I'm working on. Which brings me to the final subject I wanted to talk about. Well, I got one more before we get to that. The last thing that I purchased was, I don't know if this is right or not, but what I found on the internet was you want to have some ISO 68. 
Uh, I wanted whey oil, but the, if you just search for whey oil, it's way expensive. <laughs> I, it's ridiculous. Uh, but other people, excuse me, other people state that you can use ISO 68. Um, so I went ahead and found this hydraulic oil. It's ISO 68. It's it's supposed to be anti-wear. It's supposed to be, this particular ad or, or the listing on Amazon said it was fine for lathe work and other things. So I went with it. This thing was 30 some bucks, pretty expensive, but a, you know, a gallon of this should last me a long time for my intended purposes. So now that I have this, if we go back to the beginning of the video, I mentioned the oilers that I have. I bought a few, um, oilers off of a garage sale and some of them are eagle this this one is the one i'm going to start using with this oil i'm going to go ahead and fill this up and we'll see if i can see how this one works with the lathe and it happens to be a plus p-l-e-w-s made in the usa i don't know i've never heard of it i know eagle it's, it's a little dirty. I cleaned it up, but Eagle tends to be the, the popular one out there. I really want to get a really nice brass Eagle oiler that that's very similar to this. Um, like this is an Eagle oiler. Um, it's plastic, which is fine. But again, this is the one that I need to clean up. It's got some material and it binds up when I, when I use a trigger. So I want something that's smooth every time I need it. It's just going to work. This one does not bind up. This one works really well, um, even without the, the top on. So I've got a fresh O-ring, good old Harbor Freight O-ring. We're gonna get this installed in here and we're gonna fill this up and see how this goes. Um, so this is gonna be an upgrade to the machine in a sense of uh, an oiler, a proper oiler. And then uh, the last thing is I'll give you an update on uh, uh, an improvement that I want to do. If you, if you notice, I've got the chuck key and I got some stock over here, but you know, everybody that has a, you know, what do you do with this, this chuck key, right? It's, you throw it down, you got it here, you got it there, or like I've done, and I'm sure everybody's done this, you leave this thing in and you got this thing, you start it up and the thing flings out at you. I know that's not safe. That's not what we should be doing. I want to have a proper place to put this and I'm trying to come up. I, I don't have a welder. Uh, again, I'm learning. This is all new. I can't weld. Um, I don't have a welder. It's not something I even know how to do. What I do have is raw stock, just scrap pieces of metal and, and steel and, you know, plastic. I'm going to move some of this out of the way that I could use to, maybe come up with a solution that will uh, meet the needs that, I, that I'm looking for. Um, I'll leave this out. The, some of the ideas that I have, I mean, I can go really simple, right? You take something like this. This is a crystallite juice container. Stick a magnet in it. Bring it over here. This is the easiest thing I can think of. There we go. Throw a couple magnets in there. Look at there. Now I got a chuck key holder. You know, and it's it stays in place. But that looks kind of stupid. Now I'm sure I could find an alternative plastic container that would work better, but that would meet the needs. A place to put the chuck key. It's not gonna fall in there. I don't really like that. But I, I don't know how to weld, and I, I wish I did. But I do have epoxy, so I'm thinking, let's, let's get rid of this plastic container. So another option I thought is, well, I could, I got this piece of aluminum. I could clean this up, machine it. I like this a lot better. Or I could go, you know, that way and, you know, cut it down below this, this hole. But then I, then I still have... How do I mount this to the metal lathe? I mean, I don't want to screw a hole and put U-bolts and weird stuff. I want it to look like it was intended to be there. So I thought I've got this 
uh, I don't, it's a washer of some sort with a, you know, an indent in it. I, I'm not sure what that's, I'm sure there's a name for that thing too, but, but I could put these magnets on there. I could clean all this up really good and epoxy this to it. You know, turn this down the proper, the size that I want, epoxy that to it, and then boom, now I have a, a Chucky holder. So that's another option. And then the last option I thought, well, if what if epoxy doesn't work? Or, you know, I, I, I don't know, I can't weld this. I don't have the capacity or the materials to do that. What if we forget this, this deal, and I've got this stock, it's just a, it's a rod off of a ceiling fan to be honest, but it's steel. What if I machine this down to the right size, the size that I want, okay? Same, same deal as the aluminum piece, but instead I can just epoxy these straight to straight to this. I'll epoxy those on there and then there we go. Now I have a removable yet ideal solution for me. Of course I would I would sh cut this off, epoxy those on, and now I've got a removable yet place to hold my check key. Easy. I don't have, again, I don't have a welder. I can't weld. I don't even know how to weld if I did have one, uh, especially aluminum to metal. I don't even know if that's possible. And if it was, I wouldn't be able to do it right. So maybe, I doubt there's many people watching these videos right now, but if you are watching it and you're inclined, put a vote down there in the video and, and Tell me what I should do. Should I go with the cheapo plastic container find a, or find a better shape, but just go with this, simple, keep it simple, stupid. Should I go with the epoxy version with the aluminum and the washer? Or should I go with the nice steel version? Sim it's still simple, but it still will be very functional. Epoxy those magnets to the end and call it. So I got three different choices. I'd like to have your input. If not, I'll decide and I'll, I'll go ahead and make one anyway, but let's uh, try to make this a little interactive. Otherwise, uh, I'll get this oiler filled and uh, with this new oil and I'll see you on the next video. Uh, thanks for watching. Appreciate it. And uh, we'll get on to the next project.